Hi, welcome to Courageous Journeys. I'm Peggy Oliveira. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that comes up for almost everybody um, as they either think about starting the healing process or even sometimes months or a year into it. But it's something that really can have a profound effect. It can keep people from actually starting the process or it can cause people who are in the process, whether just starting or sometimes even a year into it, it can cause them to say, okay, I'm not doing this anymore and stop and ultimately give up hope that things can be different. So I wanted to address that today. So if you've not started the healing process, have you found yourself thinking, what if I feel worse? What if it don't get better? What if it brings up stuff that I don't want to talk about or I haven't thought about? What if it makes me feel worse? Or maybe you're in the healing process or have been in the healing process and found that you feel a little worse than maybe you did before. Maybe you have more symptoms. Maybe you're feeling more anxious. Maybe you're not sleeping as well more dreams, nightmares, more memories coming to the surface, feelings that maybe you've kind of locked away in a box on a shelf somewhere. Well, the fears and the experience that I just mentioned are normal. The truth is that when you are healing from interpersonal wounding, so what I mean by interpersonal wounding is a wound that is created from another person. And much of the time, particularly for those of you watching this video, that other person is likely somebody that you knew, probably somebody you trusted, possibly even loved. So Part of your way of coping with that, whether you were a child or an adult, part of your way of coping with that has been to compartmentalize, to put that in a box, so to speak, locked away up on a shelf. And that is a really helpful way of coping. It helps you get through it. There's nothing wrong with that. But what happens is we go through our lives with that on a with that stuff in that box on a shelf. But that shelf and that box are always in our periphery. But you go on, right? Whatever that means for you. So when you decide to start healing, even just thinking about it, you're it's almost like you're willing to look at that box. You're willing to say, okay, I know this box is here and I'm thinking about opening it. Well, naturally, because your innate ability to cope is what locked that in a box away and put it up on a shelf. So naturally, when you start to think about looking at that box, opening it up, and seeing what's inside, your self-protective mechanism, your survival mechanism is going to kick in and say, oh, no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> what if this happens? What if that happens? Nope, you're safer staying here. So it's natural for that to happen. And that can happen alongside feeling hopeful and even excited. Both of those things can be present at the same time. Though much of the time, because that coping mechanism is really strong because you've been practicing it for so long, it often can win out or it can create so much uncertainty or anxiety, doubt that you just decide that now isn't the time or come up with the reason why it's not going to work for you. So it's normal for that to happen. But it's important to recognize that that does not mean that it's the wrong thing for you to do. 
that's just your survival mechanism kicking in to try to keep you safe because it's worked, right? It has kind of kept you safe, at least in terms of how you can rationalize what that means. It's kept you from having to look in that box. If you start the healing process and you notice, which is also very, very normal, um, because you're literally not just thinking about opening up that box, you're literally opening up that box. It is natural and normal to find yourself having more thoughts. It's natural to notice maybe having a little bit more anxiety, maybe difficulty sleeping, because you're connecting with things that have been locked away on a shelf. It's normal to start to feel like you were doing better before. That is something that I hear so many people say, I was doing better before. This isn't working. <laughs> and, and logically, that kind of makes sense, right? But the reality is that were you really doing better before? Were you? It may have looked like you were doing better before from the outside. It may have even felt like you were doing better before on the inside because everything was locked away. But what did that look like for your life? How did you feel about who you are? Did you show up in pretty much every circumstance with a mask on? Were you honest when somebody asked you how you're doing and you feel like you didn't want to get out of bed that day? Are you able to just sit in silence and be with your thoughts and connect with your body in a loving and kind way? Did you feel a sense of freedom in your relationships? Did you feel deeply connected? Did you go after the things that you wanted in your life? Did you cope in healthy ways? Or did you cope in ways that sometimes left you feeling bad about who you are? Not because you should have felt bad about who you are, but that is the reality. We often feel shame for the ways that we cope. So when you're thinking about I was better off before, or is it going to make things worse? It's going to make things different, but is it really going to make things worse? The truth is, and this is a hard truth, depending on what it is that you've kept in that box, depending on how much denial you've been in about what's in that box, or maybe even the fact that that box exists, you may feel worse for a while because those symptoms, some of those feelings aren't pleasant. When memories start coming back up that you haven't thought about in years, or maybe you kind of completely forgot about, that is hard. It hurts. Grief is such a significant part of healing. And there's a reason that we societally wise do not handle grief very well. Grief hurts. And grief is such an important part of healing. So things sometimes do feel worse. But when you're going through your life with this box over here, like I said, you can kind of always see it in your periphery. So it's, you know, it's always there. You're just working hard to avoid it. So another way to think about it, and if you've watched many of my videos, you've heard me use this kind of analogy before, but it's kind of like going through your life with one hand trying to hold down 
a broken jack-in-the-box, that children's toy that you wind up and jack pops out. So jack would be like the box, or the jack-in-the-box would be like the box over here. But instead of it being locked away and just put on a shelf somewhere, you're literally having to hold that lid down. So that takes energy. It takes some ability to focus because you have to remember to do that because you're it's almost like your life depends on it. So no matter what's going on, you have to keep your hand here to keep Jack from popping out. So you go through your life, everything that you do, every minute of your day, even when you're sleeping, you put energy into keeping this lid closed because you don't know what's on the other side, what's underneath that lid, what's gonna pop out if you move your hand. And really think about that. Think about the energy, the physical energy, the emotional energy that that takes to feel, to know, for your body to recognize. And in your body, it feels sometimes quite literally like your life depends on it that you have to keep your hand there. When you start the healing process, when you're in the healing process and things come up that are hard, there's a big difference between it happening in the healing process and the really hard things that you had to live through on your own. So whether you were a child or an adult who experienced interpersonal wounding. And it doesn't have to be interpersonal wounding, but that's just the thing that tends to have kind of the most deep, the deepest kind of um, impact in terms of sense of self. When you are healing from that, or when you've experienced it, you were dealing with that on your own. You were trying to make sense out of it on your own. You were coping with it on your own. And you likely felt the need, consciously or not, to keep it a secret. And that always creates more difficulty. So you coped with it kind of automatically. You didn't make a decision necessarily how you were going to cope with it. You just did it. Your body and your mind knew how to get you through it. But you did that all on your own not even consciously. When you are in the healing process, hopefully you're working with somebody who can support you, who understands what it means to heal deep wounding, a trained professional. So as you're working through it, those difficult things are gonna come up, but you have somebody by your side you have somebody to help you process all of that. And process is a moving through. It's not just an understanding. It's not just at a cognitive level, though that is helpful. There's, there's a, certainly an important place for that. But in all likelihood, you probably know a lot of things already about it, right? Processing is navigating through it. It's metabolizing all of that experience and energy so that it can move out. And we can't do that on our own. So when those difficult things are coming up in the healing process, you have support. You're consciously and intentionally doing things that help you get through those difficult periods, that help you navigate through that. And you're not alone. And the feeling within your heart, your mind, and your body to recognize that you're not alone in it really can go a long way when you are able to kind of lean into that truth. So as you're thinking about the idea, like what the hell am I doing? I felt better before, honor that. Because 
that may be very true on some levels. It really might be. But I would just encourage you to think about it. How it looks from the outside is not really how you are doing. Going through life numb or having to stay busy, having to be perfect so that you cannot look at that box or not think about the fact that your hand is holding this down. It's almost like a, um, I don't really know how they work, but like the idea of um, a landmine or something. Like once your foot is there, you're okay until you lift your foot. So how okay were you really? Because going through life, just surviving, just doing the things that you think you're supposed to do, engaging in the things that you think are supposed to make you happy, but yet you feel maybe more alone, more hopeless at the end of the day, That's not really okay. And you deserve to feel more than okay. You deserve to wake up every day trusting and believing that you are worthy. That you have the ability to create and live the life that you desire. Maybe even a life that you've never imagined yourself to have. But that can't happen without healing. So when things feel more challenging, honor that. Acknowledge it. Today is a really hard day. Or these last weeks have been so hard and I'm doubting what's possible. Honor that. Talk about it. Because that's part of the healing too. Thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. Leave them in the comments below. Um, if you've got a question you'd like me to answer, you can send it to Q&A at CourageousJourneys.com. I'll put the link in the description below. If you've not subscribed, please do so and be sure to click the little bell for notifications. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. All of that helps other people see this video too. Thanks for joining me. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.